Gentlemen, welcome to the eastern side of Washington and uh, the North Cascades. Uh, thanks for letting me do our class, you know, kind of like this. Um, would not be my uh, my preference, but um, yeah, travel. So anyway, I didn't get here till pretty late, and um, I can't even show you outside. We have a good view, but it's, um, so I will send you some pictures when we get back together in the uh, in a, uh, a real virtual session. Hopefully uh, next week. So uh, my intent for session four was to go over the the uh, specific mechanics of how to do a QSO. And um, this this venue that we're we're going to be kind of experimenting with tonight, I think will allow us to get that done. Actually, I, I don't think we'll be too far off base on this. Uh, I wish we had some exchange back and forth, which we'll lack, of course. But keep in mind, I am happy to answer questions whenever you guys want to. Uh, on my phone, I have a uh, pen to write, 206-948-5892. And I'm happy to text um, or email as well. So uh, so go over the stuff um, uh, and then keep an, a, a notebook maybe of some questions that uh, uh, you can get back to me on. Okay, so the format will be, um, granted it's a little one-sided here today, but I will be providing information and we'll be doing some sending because, you know, it's QSO um, uh, deployment is probably uh, best uh, appreciated in um, in Morse code. So uh, what I would ask you guys to do is get into a spot where it's kind of, you know, not real, um, not a lot of background noise, so you can pay attention to this. And um, during the, uh, the call sign uh, recognition stuff. I, I actually would not mind if you keep notes on that. There's going to be a drill at the end of this as well, where I'll be sending some call signs at six words a minute, and you guys can copy them down, and then we'll see how you did. So uh, again, many thanks. Let's get right into it. So a QSO has sort of a um, a time-honored construction. I don't think there's like any... Um, rules, you know, steadfast rules, but people um, for, I guess it's for as long as there's been amateur radio, have built QSOs on kind of these rounds. Round one is sending your signal report, so RST, your name, and um, your QTH. Uh, round two is sending the weather and your rig and your antenna and usually your age. And you know, a lot of people kind of end it at that point, especially if people are new to amateur radio. It's just kind of like, that's enough. <laughs> you know, we'll go ahead and say 73s and move on to the next one. Or you could add as many extra levels to that as you would like getting into a decent rag tube. But for right now, we're going to keep it to kind of that shorter format. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, look at the notes that I've presented here for you. Uh, as I mentioned, the uh, the name RST and QS, uh, QTH are uh, the basic required information in that first round. Name is um, is becoming replaced by OP, op, uh, short for operator. Um, this has actually been an evolution over the last five or six years where we would rarely hear that in a QSO at all. And now that's kind of, we're hearing that a lot more than name. However, you know, we use both in this course. I'm not sure where this is going to end up, but generally in uh, CW, the shorter version of whatever it is that you're trying to send is the one that wins. So my suspicion is that we'll be using the op more than name in the future. Um, and then second round, as we talked about, I, I did want to point out one thing um, right here. Okay, that didn't work. Let me try this. Uh, I am trying to... Uh... <laughs> right there. All these cool tools. So the shortcut for weather is WX. Um, for obvious reasons, this is, weather is a long word. We use it commonly in QSO, so um, it was good we got a, a shorter way to get that across. All right, so before you do QSO, you have to answer a CQ call. You know, answer or do a CQ call, so let's practice um, on kind of doing that in general. Uh, there actually is a fairly straightforward and accepted way of, of doing, uh, of calling Q, uh, CQ. That is, you send CQ three times and you're called twice. So in the case of this fellow over there, I don't have any way of knowing whether this is going across, so I assume you can hear it okay. Okay. Actually, hold on for just a second. 
Okie dokie. And you'll see that I ended with K, not KN, as we talked about during our last session. So K is what do you end your, your uh, phrases with if you, expand, if you uh, anticipate responses from anybody. KN, again, that's different. That's when you're talking with a specific person. You expect um, that person to respond to your questions or to um, the uh, uh, statements that you made. So, okay. Okay, moving along to answering. So this is like the meat and potatoes here. So um, the um, oh, actually one more thing I, I will add to uh, calling CQ. You guys may have heard this where you'll be on, you know, finding someone uh, who's calling CQ and it's like this just goes on and on. D, 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 you know, it goes like not just three times. You're you're already counting 12 and there's they haven't even given their call sign yet. That was kind of an old way of doing it. And there are still people who, who are out there, but very frustrating. I mean, it would be much better to do the, the standard three CQs and then you call twice and just wait. You don't hear anything in, in a few seconds, just send it again. Then people can break in and um, get in touch with you. Anyway, so uh, let, not, not that I'm opinionated about that or anything. but Okay, so the, uh, uh, the way to answer a, a CQ station is with your call sign, and send it at least twice. So, for example, in the CQ that we just sent, which was my call sign, um, this particular station, as you see on the screen there, is answering it by giving my call sign and then repeating their own and then using KN because they want me, you know, they want a specific person uh, to answer them. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I sent my, my sent that twice. Okay, let me fix that again. Okay, so, so what if you do that and the other station sends a question mark back? So I would, um, I would send your call uh, three times the next time you answer them because they didn't get it because there was a dropout because of you know, QSB or, or whatever. So um, it's indication obviously they didn't get it, but I would repeat that not just twice. I'd add an extra time in there just for good measure. Okay, so... Uh, if the other station heard you, they will go through the the uh, grammar of the uh, round one QSO. Uh, before I send here, you will notice as you're kind of looking at the screen, uh, this TNX. So TNX is an old way of saying thank you, you know, thanks. We used to see that all the time, 100% of the time, whenever a QSO involved some courtesy. But that's being replaced now by just TU. It is faster and it seems more to the point. But you'll see a lot of people, especially old people like me, still use the TNX because it just sounds a little more formal and it sounds cool. But I will tell you one place where everybody sends that old form is in the first, um, the first round of QSOs. Thanks for calls, almost always TNX for call. You'll also see FER, okay, that's a shorthand for four. FER means four. And... Um, Okay, well, I'll just go ahead and send this. Uh, go ahead and, and uh, follow along as I'm doing this. Hold on for just a second. <laughs> My uh, key is not working here. I will fix it. Okay. You don't know this, but that took me 20 minutes to get this thing to work. 
ended up having to change out an entire key. And fortunately, I actually had an extra one here, so it works okay. All right, so let's go ahead and and uh, send this. Again, you know, sort of pay attention as we're reading here. So ending with uh, with KN. So um, basic information that's supplied there. Uh, the a um, uh, couple things I wanted to point out. Uh, generally, when there is a nine in the signal report, so RST has a nine in it. You use the number the first time, but when you repeat that, you replace the nine with your shortcut uh, N. So it means the same thing. And again, you know, CW is a method of communication where brevity is really important. So um, for FER, it's for four, and URs, yours, and DE, of course, is uh, your, um, this is. Uh, FER and UR are uh, pretty much universal these days. Okay, so uh, the response to that other station would be, so when you are indicating that you have received the information, the whole transmission, you just send a couple of R's, and that is the equivalent of saying, you know, solid copy or whatever, which is all also good to say. But if you use RR, the other station knows that that um, uh, that you got everything. So in this case. Sent my call wrong. Let me try that again.
Okay, so uh, so that completes round one for both stations now. They know the signal reports, where they're from, and, and who they are. Um, the um, uh, name and Q, so I, I or name and QTH rather, um, brevity, like I said, is, is important. And if there are ways that we can shorten down the amount of verbiage, it's always going to work. And sometimes this can be um, sensitive topics. For instance, your name, right? So if a person has a very long name, sometimes that can be difficult for the other station to, to kind of tolerate if it's sent in all, you know, like 17 letters. So uh, definitely default to a short name or even a nickname instead. You wonder why there's a lot of people who are Ed and who are Al. Okay, that's not entirely by chance. <laughs> that's what those guys choose in order to make sure that their exchanges are just, you know, to the point. So in uh, that same regard, when we're discussing our QTH, typically DX stations are not as familiar with remote um, uh, cities and towns. And so if you are from, um, you know, Methow, Washington, where I'm right now, I mean, for heaven's sakes, people in Washington don't even know where Methow, Washington is. But everybody knows where Seattle is. And so for pretty much everybody, I just send my QTH as Seattle. You know, no Washington. On, on, there's only one Seattle, right? So that should be fine. Similarly, if you find yourself near a larger community, take advantage of that and just within, you know, 20 or 30 miles, Technically, I don't live in Seattle. I live in Edmonds, Washington. We're 10 miles north of Seattle, but I, I call my QTH Seattle for the reason it's just to simplify things, particularly in uh, places within this country or in a DX stations. They're just not familiar with it. Uh, so food for thought on that. Okay, so moving on to the second round, and this is um, discussing the um, weather and rig, antenna, and age. So those four things are generally taken. So I will send, I'm not going to send too much more of these exchanges here just to keep it, keep you guys from going nuts, but um, just for the standpoint of kind of copying and understanding the flow of things, I will for the next few of these. Okay, so here we go. Oh, and by the way, I should, I should tell you, since I'm using a new uh, set of paddles right now, I'm kind of getting used to them again, so therefore expect a few mistakes, as you've noticed already.
Okay, and after I just told you that we, uh, we're not using solid anymore, we use RR instead. Okay, I put that in here because, in fact, there are people who still use, you know, like solid copy instead of RR, you know, uh, receive, receipt. So, anyways, just wanted you to hear that. Um, and then uh, the uh, uh, shortcut for with WID um, is there. And um, bin ham, you know, BN means I've been, B E E N. It's a short form of that. Although I will have to tell you, the word bin, B E E N, is. Um, I honestly, I don't think that there's really a need to short that one, because well, here's here's my my uh, reasoning on that. Bin is very short to start with. Okay. This is sent at uh, uh, 20 words a minute speed. Okay, those E's are so close together that they they are so fast. I can't believe that that has a dramatic impact on the speed of your your sending. So I'll, I'll send them side by side. <clears throat> So you can see what I mean. And then the short of that, <clears throat> I mean, in my opinion, um, it doesn't matter, which is why you do send uh, on that particular uh, where you see it kind of both ways. Okay. So our second uh, response is, um, and I'm not going to send this one, but if you follow along in the, on, the, um, on the slide here, so they're just uh, uh, also giving uh, information about the rig, and uh, in this case, um, this operator has a Yagi antenna. Um, and uh, so this is Jim, and so his 70-year-old uh, guy's been a ham for 50 years, and so he's sending it back then. And um, so we're wrapping up here, and the um, very common for people to go through those two levels of the QSO and then send 73s which is completely fine. Um, you know what? You, you cannot force people to say more than they want to say. Darn it. So at that point, if they're saying 73s, you know, that's, you wish them good and um, uh, step back yourself then. Okay, so uh, we, we talked about a number of shortcuts in this discussion it's right there. So uh, um, these are all very, uh, very commonly seen. The one at the very bottom we did not talk about, but I wanted to throw it in. You'll be hearing a lot about this. It is the shortcut for and. It's just ES. Whoops. I don't like this panel because it's got a big long thing on it and I can't, I always catch my thumb when I'm bringing it back. So. which is why I keep it at the cabin. Anyway, um, it's very fast to say this, uh, to use the uh, uh, the shortcut here much faster than, than the word and. So um, uh, a, a brief, and I will, I will keep it brief, um, discussion of some important Q signs. So uh, QRL is the first one that I wanted to talk about. QRL is a, a shortcut um, for is the channel clear? Is the, the frequency in use? Whenever you are considering uh, calling CQ, send this first to make sure that there's nobody on frequency because um, you might not be hearing that person. There could be a QSO going on, but the station, one of the stations that's sending right now is so distant that you're not hearing anything. But nonetheless, there's someone you know who can hear you just fine that's trying to listen to that other station. So, so, so calling QRL, um, if you hear nothing, that's good, but you can call CQ. But if you hear this, so QRL sent twice in response to your QRL means that the frequency is use is in use, and they're asking you to kind of depart. Um, the courteous way is to, to, just to send two dits to let, let them know that you understood that, and then um, you leave. If a, if a station not engaged in a queue, so it just happens to be on frequency, they may say GA, which in addition to good afternoon, also means go ahead. And um, in this situation, they're just letting you know that um, the station is open. They may not answer your, your uh, CQ. Um, they're just letting you know that, you know, send, and if I feel like it, I'll get back to you. QSB, oh my gosh, I made a mistake there. So QSB is not, please slow down. <laughs> okay, correct that, that's wrong. 
QSB is uh, fading, signal fading. And this uh, can happen as um, a consequence of the time of day affecting um, propagation. 20 meters typically drops out uh, pretty rapidly in the evening on, on certain times. And tonight, actually, 20 meters uh, is actually still uh, operational. And uh, what are we here right now? It's midnight. You know, so um, uh, sometimes we have those those great propagation days in the evening, but more commonly, right around sunset or so, you start to see it fall apart completely, and you'll start to see these these uh, oscillations um, and signals, this, this uh, fading QSB. So you may decide to um, call it quits or abandon a QSO because of, of that. So you just let your uh, the other station know that there's QSB or their station is affected by fading. And um, QTH station location. Okay, so the um, as promised, I have some sending drills. Oh, I'm sorry, sending for me, receiving for you guys. So grab a pen and paper, and I'm going to send these call signs, each one twice. And there are a bunch of them here. So I can't say are you guys ready because I have no idea if you are, but I am ready. So here we go. Th these are international call signs, DX call signs. Too. Doing okay? A few more.
Okay. So, now, how can you tell if you got those right? Well, I have all the listed right there. Okay, so um, I appreciate uh, you guys checking in with me. That was uh, kind of an extra uh, add-on session. I hope this uh, um, information was helpful. Uh, we will review some of it during our next session, which will be Section 5, coming up um, on Monday, I think. So uh, I uh, will be available for questions uh, while I'm here at my cabin. I've got a whole bunch of things, things to do, so I'm going to be in the tractor for a while. I'll be climbing some of the... the um, uh, train to clear trees and stuff, but I will have my phone with me, and so I'm happy to answer questions. Like I said, any time that you guys call. So uh, 73s, you guys take care, and um, I look forward to seeing uh, you in the real virtual world. <laughs> it sounds odd to say that. So have a wonderful evening, morning, or wherever you guys happen to be listening.